Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Friday night, January the 25th, 2019, as we head into a weekend with some rather quiet weather across the United States. Uh, at the moment, there isn't a whole lot happening. I uh, guess we're just kind of setting the table up for uh, the bigger changes that are going to occur next week. We've been talking about uh, the uh, polar air mass that's going to be coming down from uh, basically starting out from Siberia and uh, heading uh, our way uh, and uh, dropping down through Canada across uh, Hudson Bay and James Bay and usually that's where the vortex is kind of bottom out but this one's going to drop into the northern Great Lakes so that's going to spread bitter cold air through the plains the Midwest and the Ohio Valley and to, uh, to some extent into the east, although uh, it will be uh, more uh, from, uh, say, New York City westward. Uh, it'll only be able to get so far east, at least initially. And then that cold air will eventually work its way across, albeit in modified fashion. The question is, with the arrival of the cold air, will be an Arctic cold front on Tuesday. And whether there... <clears throat> whether that front is going to come to come through quietly or is it going to make some noise for some areas and it'll be interesting to see what happens because we have weather models basically uh, kind of uh, in two opposing uh, camps was uh, somebody on the board put it uh, one uh, one uh, has a slight is a different look it basically boils down to the polar vortex how far south it drops and what is the orientation of that polar vortex going to be when it makes the drop uh, how is the energy going to be moving around it what impact is that energy going to have uh, on the on the front itself as it moves towards the east coast and there are a few other key players in all of this that we are going to get into uh, hello to those of you from uh, new york new jersey Connecticut Stormwatch page on Facebook, also from Angry Ben's Angry Weather Facebook page, and from my Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee, and those of you who are watching from my uh, weather app on Google Play for Android devices, which you can download for free from uh, Google Play, and there was an update done to that app uh, on the 23rd, and it uh, we added Zoom Radar, and uh, which is a really great tool. Uh, you can uh, take the radar anywhere you want. Uh, you can see the rain versus snow difference, and there's a whole bunch of other things that you can do with it. Uh, also, uh, you can uh, put in your location, wherever you happen to be, uh, to get your local conditions and your local short and long-range forecast. If you like icons, you will get those. And, of course, you have my weather analysis, the snow forecast maps, uh, all across the eastern United States from northern Georgia clear on up uh, through Maine and everybody in between and that app as I said is absolutely free it is on Google Play didn't get a notice from I, uh, from Apple that my app the, the uh, iPhone version was rejected that's a good sign because they usually reject it right away and they didn't this time around and I, I just quickly want to mention at the top for those of you who are on the app or if you're watching this uh, video. Uh, consider expanding your weather experience by uh, joining my Patreon platform, which is a subscription weather platform. It's just two bucks a month, and uh, you get lots of extra weather. Speaking of extra weather, are Hello? you joining me? Uh, for a few minutes. You know, what the I thought you were asleep. I was half asleep, and I just woke up and. Your friend, your friend from Seaside Heights called. Oh. So. Oh, all right. So we got into a spirited discussion about Stan and Ollie, believe it or not. Oh, Jesus, Joe Rayo, everybody. <laughs> so as I was saying, uh, you can uh, jump onto my Patreon platform. It's just two bucks a month. It's a great way to support what I'm doing here on YouTube, my app, uh, the live streams, and uh, as a Patreon member, you get private live streams or just for members only, exclusive weather posts, etc., etc., etc. And I will throw a link up on there. So, uh, Joe, what you usually do on, on what we've been doing here is we're <clears throat> going to do the short-range weather first, take us through the weekend and into the beginning of next week, and then we can talk about uh, the uh, longer range and the implications with what may or may not happen uh, Tuesday into Wednesday uh, in the eastern part of the U.S., and then the big polar plunge. So you ready to go? Yeah, well, why not? Um... All right. So, uh, first things first. Tonight's watches and warnings map uh, is pretty quiet. It, it's uh, 
kind of taking a breather this weekend. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on. A little bit of lake effect in upstate New York, a little bit of lake effect uh, around the uh, Great Lakes, and a little bit of uh, wind issues up in the Dakotas, some fog issues out in the west, and uh, some frost and freeze down in the uh, uh, south, uh, southern Georgia, northeastern Florida. That that really is it. There's no no big storms around. It gets like that sometimes. And it's nice uh, when you consider what we had a week ago, when that whole map was like uh, in Technicolor. Uh, to see a lot of white now on that map is, uh, especially with the upcoming week, the last weekend of January. Joe, where did it all go? I, it's it's hard to believe that we're all the way at the end of. Uh, this first, uh, well, actually, the middle of the three coldest months of the year, and uh, it's going to be, it'll be gone by uh, and, this time next week. And uh, at least for uh, my our area, Joe, the uh, you know we're in this. If if you, I, I want to get a plot of the uh, snow amounts that have occurred uh, so far this winter in the Northeast and Mid Atlantic, because there's a slow. I think if you draw a line from from Boston. Uh, through northwest New Jersey and then kind of swing it down uh, uh, to about Washington, DC, to, to about Baltimore or just maybe just north of Baltimore and then curve it around and up to the middle of New Jersey. There's a giant snow, basically a snow hole because the areas around that, it's, you know, we've been kind of emphasizing the fact that there's been snow, little, so little snow, but that really is that really has been a very localized thing compared to everybody else in the Northeast and in the Mid-Atlantic states. Well, believe it or not, there is already just such a map. Uh, if you go to weathertrends360.com... All right, so we'll do that one moment. So let's do that. <clears throat> um, I didn't have a chance to search for it today, so it's weathertrends... weathertrends360.com. 360.com. And then you have to go to the dashboard, believe it or not. And that's, okay. That's an excellent site. I highly recommend... Looking for it now. Do I have to log in? Uh, no, you don't have to log in. You should, should be able to just. Um, hmm. Where is it? Usually, usually there's something like dashboard. I have it. I have it on my. Uh, Maybe because you're logged in. You want to log in on on yours? No, I never had to log in. Really? Believe it or not, I just. Oh. Huh. Oh, you see what they did? I'm just scrolling here. They knew we were coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? We'll try it another day. But there is exactly what you had just mentioned. They have a map uh, on the dashboard section, and it just indeed show that that uh, that oval or cigar shaped area where they're calling it the snow hole, where right? The, Which is uh, what the, it is, where the snow lovers are crying, so to speak. And uh, every you know, outside of that snow hole, the uh, the snow has been normal or even above average. Well, our good friend, Andy Gregorio, I believe, lives uh, north of uh, Albany, up in uh, Saratoga. Is that where he is? Uh, yeah, Albany? not too far from there. And he was uh, he t took a picture of his front, uh, outside of his front door, uh, lamenting the fact that there was like 18 inches of snow, that he had shoveled away the 18, and then the plows came along down his block, and not only replaced the 18, but put another 18 on top. Oh, God. So. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, the the uh, snowfall, Joe, in the last 24 hours with the big rain yesterday... Uh, a lot of uh, this came after the system went by. So uh, this was, a, I think it's the second or third time since November where we've had one of these systems come, we bring rain all the way up to Caribou, Maine. That, uh, you, that usually doesn't happen very often that you get very little snow from a system up in northern, uh, upstate New York, uh, up, you know, northeastern New York, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Usually the rain snow line maybe stops along or just north of I-90, but this one crawled all the way up. Absolutely, and uh, but but you know what? It 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 was so very cold early in the week. It's going to get cold again over the next seven days. They have snow making machines at the big ski resort, so oh, they're fine. They're fine. They're, Lake you know. effect action on the west side of Michigan and on the Upper Peninsula. Uh, not so much going on in the west, except for a little bit of. Uh, snow and maybe some heavier snows in some of the mountains west of Denver uh, in Colorado. So as I said, you know, pretty pretty quiet uh, situation across the country. Really, Joe, it's weak, it's, it's weak cold fronts that we're dealing with. One came through this, uh, a couple of hours ago. Right. So now we're getting our, our shot of cold air for the weekend. And then we got another one probably approaching for Sunday. Uh, so the temperatures are going to be uh, chilly on Saturday in the east. They're kind of going to edge up a bit on Sunday, then kind of edge down a little bit on Monday. Right. And then we'll set the table for the Arctic front that'll be dropping down. And in the West, 
uh, it's just kind of quiet, higher pressures. Uh, there's not really much going on. We don't have any big lows off the West Coast. Uh, it's dominated by high pressure and a ridge in the West, so uh, things are pretty quiet there. It uh, looks like uh, the upcoming month of February is going to be pretty darn cold east of the Mississippi. Um, if well, at least the, the start is. If you look at the if you look at the uh, both the six to ten day and the eight to fourteen day outlook from Climate Prediction Center and today's experimental three to four week prog, everywhere pretty much east of the Mississippi is going to be in in terms of probabilities below normal right on through uh, I think something like the twenty second of February. So uh, we're talking a spell of cold weather uh, for a good part of the, uh, well, at least to the eastern half and maybe the eastern two-thirds of the nation. 50s and 60s in the southeast down in Florida. We've got 50s and 60s back through Texas, and you start to move north. You get into some colder air, the coldest air around the Great Lakes, single digits and teens, uh, below zero uh, through uh, the Dakotas and Minnesota, uh, as uh, they're going to, that's going to be warm compared to what they, they've had. And in the west, uh, it's, as I said, it's pretty quiet, uh, a little on the chilly side, but nothing really extraordinary. Is the, uh, the 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 uh, cold air that's up uh, well to the north is going to be coming east of the Rockies more than it will be coming west. Uh, the uh, radar is quiet too. We've got a little bit of snow action going on. It looks like some uh, snow showers near and just south of Chicago, moving across central Illinois, and also down into southern Missouri. And uh, we've got a little bit of lake effect action uh, off of Lake Ontario. Uh, coming into uh, just north, it looks like it's up maybe near Watertown here, that you're getting some snow uh, coming in off the lake and also uh, coming in off the lake uh, in and around Buffalo. West-southwesterly winds, that's uh, that's one, uh, well, I mean, there are a variety of different ways that the winds can blow or interact with the Great Lakes, but the west-southwest wind, that's the one that usually brings Buffalo and also Watertown some of their heavier doses of snow during the course of the winter season. All right, and speaking of snow, I just kind of, I, I have the map pretty wide. This is actually through Monday, 7 p.m. So what you're seeing uh, over the uh, Great Lakes is uh, from what's going to be uh, falling with a low that's going to be coming down southeastward through the Northern Plains and eventually find its way up near or just south or just north of Chicago. And a forecast to snow amounts of uh, you know, fairly substantial, a solid 5 to 10 inch snowfall in some areas in that sort of narrow band that's running there from Dakotas, uh, from North Dakota and south, Northeast and South Dakota, Southern Minnesota, across Southern Wisconsin, and then swinging eastward from there. They're going to put this snow down, Joe, ahead of brutally cold air that's coming in. And we can actually give a taste of that. I'm going to bring, uh, and I think these numbers may, these numbers are going to fluctuate a bit. Uh, we'll just look at the low temperatures first, and we'll we'll start at Monday. Now, this is before the the really truly bitter cold air comes in, but you're looking at a lot of single digits uh, and low teens. The Chicago's there, sitting at about nine. Tuesday, now here's where you start to see the Arctic air. So uh, your single digits, the zero line runs from about Chicago along the Missouri state line with Iowa and then starts to arc back northwestward from there. But now you're starting to see uh, minus 10s and minus 20s coming into uh, Minnesota, minus teens and, and minus 20s into uh, Minnesota and in through uh, eastern North and South Dakota. And on Wednesday morning, Chicago's at 15 below for the low. Milwaukee is at 16 below. Minneapolis at, uh, I think that's 23 below zero. Now we can look at the high temperature for the day. And the high temperatures are, you know, single digits to minus 10, minus 11 below zero. I'm sorry, this is Tuesday, not Wednesday. I stand corrected. This is Tuesday. Okay. Wednesday's high temperatures are in the minus teens. And Wednesday morning's low temperatures are in the minus 20 to minus 30 range. That, right. that is brutal air. Right. And then Thursday morning, now that's when that air now reaches the East Coast. And I think these numbers here might come down a little bit, depending on which model gets it right. I think if the European model gets it right, it, these numbers might come down a little bit. And I think even if the GFS gets it, gets it right, these numbers may come down a little bit because of the fact that the GFS has been so horrible hardly, hardly with, with temperatures. But again, a lot of minus 20s, minus uh, 
by this time we're starting to see the air maybe modify ever so slightly because I don't see any minus 30s but a ton of minus 20s Chicago at minus 16 uh, Chicago may go nearly th for about a three day stretch where they won't get above zero Isn't that's that, long that's amazing and you say to yourself a big city like Chicago Illinois and minus 15 and meanwhile here in New York we struggle here in the New York metropolitan area just to get the temperatures below zero and the coldest temperature we've ever seen in 1934, February the 9th, minus 15 at Central Park. Uh, and we've been nowhere near that ever since. So uh, it's, it's interesting to see how two large major metropolitan areas, one getting, you know, 5 and 10 and 15 to believe, uh, below zero readings, routine, almost routinely coming up in the uh, week to come. And meanwhile, New York still struggling just to make it below zero. I don't remember, Joe, did I bookmark that... Um the site where, because we could show, you know, I remember looking at <clears throat> the uh, actual maps of uh, that uh, those days in 1934. What was the site you told me about? The uh, Was it the Canadian Metro well, Center? Yeah, well, Canadian Metro, um, um, what I usually do is I usually go to uh, uh, University of Quebec, comma, uh, weather. Oh, here it is. I think I did metro, see it. It's a metro. Re, metro it's, ca it's called Reanalysis of North America. Right. Okay, so what was the date on that? February 9th, 1934. All right, so I'm going to go to, well, let's go to 1934. And, all right, so I have to read, these months are in French. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, February 9th. 9th. Okay. So that's how it looked to bring that uh, that that minus uh, what was it minus fourteen minus fifteen yeah, minus fifteen minus fifteen, but it, when you have the high in this position, Joe, this this is how well, we had our bitter cold the, the the bitter cold temperatures on uh, Monday right came because we had the look where the air is coming from. Well, exactly, and this is how it was on Monday, right. albeit this was a much colder air mass clearly, but this is how it would have to get below zero. It is with a north wind or a north northeast wind, and, how, and the question is also, and that much, doesn't happen too often. And how much snow was on the ground? Uh, you know, that I, that could have also have contributed to uh, to the uh, bitterness, so to speak, of the very cold we, conditions. We can follow the history. I, I remember seeing Joe on the on the actual weather maps. I'm going to go back. Let's go back two days. It was like it was a this high was huge in terms of pressure when it was coming down. Now on this, it's been kind of simplified a bit. They have it as a 10:34, but I remember looking at the actual maps that this was a um, um, a 60 plus high yeah. that was up here, a, t a 1060 millibar high that uh, that th that uh, moved through. I'm just trying to get this to progress a little bit. I'm a little chagrined. The uh, the one site that I've always relied on, which is the NOAA Library site, in which uh, they took all of the weekly and daily weather maps, scanned them, and you can get them. But you also have to input a uh, a, a, a product called Deja Vu, which is kind of like a, uh, a site to open up a PDF or Adobe uh, maps. But the problem lately, Joe, is that uh, my computer has been warning me, don't go there because uh, somebody may have hacked into it oh, or okay. the privacy issues or whatever. And I, have no, I don't know whether or not that has anything to do with the partial shutdown. I'm hoping that that's the case. It now could that, be. Now that the country well, is back, uh, it, maybe we'll get that it, back. It, in it could be. And, and by the way, that particular high wound up going off the mid-Atlantic coast. And just so you don't feel bad, the snow lovers don't feel bad uh, with the fact that we've had it happened uh, twice, uh, that we've, we've had it happen where it warmed up in rain after a, co a shot of cold air. Same thing happened here in New York City. Uh, uh, after that high moved out and the next system moved through, uh, a few days after it hit that minus 15, it was in the 40s. Right. Uh, right. It was a super rebound, and when precipitation came in, not a flake or an ice pellet, it rained. It, it was just rain. Right. So uh, it it, uh, it does indeed happen. So uh, let's move forward through the weekend. I forgot to set my tropical tidbits up from our buddy Levi Cowan. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for letting us use the maps, and uh, you can... Uh, it's an absolutely free site, and you can uh, use them by going to uh, tropicaltidbits.com. So, really, Joe, no big deal this weekend. Much of the nation quiet, but there is rain for Florida, and this is a low that is going to develop off the southeast coast of the United States. And when you look at the setup, if that low had been timed a bit better, or if the energy from the north had come down a bit faster, where they could have teleconnected, 
that low could have made for a blockbuster storm sure in the east with the high where it is right. and all the cold air that, that's up uh, across uh, southern Canada for it to tap. But I, I'm wondering whether that's going to have impact on the system for Tuesday, depending on how it develops or if it's uh, a bit further to the north and west. I think that's a critical question here uh, going forward, and I don't know if which model has a better handle on it. The well, Euro the, the, uh, the European Ensemble, which I looked at a little while ago, took that uh, coastal system and pretty well driv drove it out. Right, which we and, know was going to happen. Right. I'm saying how much, by that being there and how robust that system is there, I'm just wondering what kind of impact will it have with the, oh. the energy coming down with the vortex right. and whether a load develops on that Arctic front or not. Because right. 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 if you run the, through the GFS for Tuesday, uh, you've got uh, basically just an Arctic front that passes through and you've got some a post frontal precip, which is not always a good thing to depend on if you're a, if, if if you're looking for snow to happen. Well, it's a fairly robust type of Alberta clipper, and uh, unfortunately, it becomes a little bit too robust. It kind of occludes to maturity, if you will, and before it has a chance to dig further to the south and east, let's say maybe over or south of our area, it curves to our north and west. And now, what you have to rely upon, as you just mentioned, is maybe that system out over the ocean slowing things up a little bit and allowing for a little ripple or a, uh, a wave to develop on the trailing front and develop and move up along it and bring us maybe a surge of moisture here later in the day on uh, Tuesday or Tuesday night. Initially, it looks like that uh, precipitation would be in the form of rain, but then there's a very uh, good push of cold air coming in behind that system, and maybe if the cold air came in as that wave was passing us by, a quick change over to snow, and maybe, who knows, Tuesday night or into early Wednesday, we might have enough to uh, put down an inch or two or three or, or, or whatever. Or it, it may just be a simple cold front passage, in which case the front moves through, we get a touch of snow with it, and then bang, we go right into the next surge of very cold weather, which will encompass our area Wednesday, and especially so Thursday into Friday. I, I, I think a lot will depend, uh, judging, looking at the two models, I looked at both the European... Now, I'm going to bring them up in just a second. I'm just trying to pull up some uh, some graphics here uh, that I that I built to kind of uh, explain what's going on. And you know, as always with these things, when you want them to come up fast, <clears throat> they're not uh, they're not loading quickly. So everybody just be uh, ever so patient with me. But I think it's going to have to do with the orientation of the <clears throat> the vortex when it comes down. What is it going to look like? Uh, how flat is the flow going to be? And, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to bring up both the uh, the GFS <clears throat> and the European today. I'm also going to bring up the uh, a little little shot that I drew with the NAM, and I think this will help uh, explain it all. So uh, here is the uh, GFS, the bowling ball. It's a bowling ball, right? It's this <laughs> sort of. It, it kind of looks like an egg lying on its side. And, and if you look, folks, at the flow, and they want to look at it, so let's bring it up to the full screen here. So when you look at it here, when you look at it uh, in terms of the flow, it's just kind of this gentle, well, I mean, maybe gentle is not the right word, but it's very smooth. Uh, you don't, there's no um, amplitude at all to this. It's just this big gigantic salad bowl bowling ball type of flow and you really can't do anything with this uh, any uh, disturbances that are running along in that flow are going to be relatively weak they might occasionally produce a couple of scattered snow showers here and there and that's just about it so it's just this bitter cold air aloft and that the center of that vortex drops over the great lakes what the european however is suggesting uh, and I'll, I'll let me get, make this a bit bigger for everybody. What the European is suggesting, th look at the difference between the two models from what I just showed you yeah. and what the uh, European has. The European, it, it looks like um, a sword is sticking, it el it's elongated, the vortex itself is elongated northeast, southwest, and the upper low is actually more up toward Lake Superior than sitting in, in, in the middle of the state of Michigan. It doesn't look like a bowling ball at all. It's kind of tilted on its side, and it has this very sharp, negatively tilted trough. So what you would count on is that uh, as that trough swings around and the Arctic front is near the coast, 
that you'll get a, a, a wave that develops on it, which the ensembles develop, right. and all the members develop, right. uh, and a low uh, on the operational uh, European, which is the one everybody sees, uh, ha is uh, right along <clears throat> the southern part of the Delaware, of the Delmarva Peninsula, just offshore, and it looks like it takes that low into Rhode Island. Uh, the, uh, uh, of course, with, with as always with these things, the the rain snow line will be lying perilously close north right. south along the coast so you could have a situation where it's mostly rain in southern new england north and east right. but uh in new york say the new york state connecticut line westward and then draw a line through new york city down the jersey shore that's where the rain snow line could wind up being in the europeans argument and it it, it did produce some uh you know, relatively robust snowfall amounts, certainly more than what the right. GFS did. So the question for me is, the Europe, is the European finally going to get one of these right? <laughs> right? Been, I, is, that, is that a legitimate question? It hasn't been a, been the, the best of years for the European. In fact, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, the uh, 20, I think it was 2011, 2012, where it, it kept crying wolf all through the winter season. It kept showing, you know, significant snowfalls, and then when we actually got to the event, it was anything but. Uh, th to, for this to happen, Joe, again, you were absolutely right. We'd have to have some kind of a wave or development on the front. And then the question is, if we do have a wave or development, how quickly does it develop? Uh, it, it may be a relatively weak system as it passes us by and gives us and then a little thing. And then, and deepens, then, it, when then it, it explodes. Then it deepens, yes. Yeah. So uh, that, that's another question, too. You could have all this happen, and by the time everything gets going, it's, for, for most areas... Uh, south and west of New York City, it winds up being too late. But uh, just to throw it out there, I mean, the European did produce uh, in snow amounts about four inches in Washington D.C. and Baltimore, and actually has snow pretty far south and west into the into the Central Appalachians. So uh, it'll to to me uh, the um, the amplitude kind of goes against what we've been seeing lately there hasn't been a whole lot of amplitude in a lot of these systems that we've been dealing with right so you wonder whether this is you know a situation where the models you know, see all this amplitude that really isn't there i i don't know uh the other th issue is uh if the european is correct it kind of handles the cold in the in the east a bit differently because it basically drags the vortex out and it we're still sitting here with single-digit lows come Saturday morning. Right. So it would be, uh, you know, below uh, 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 lows in the single digits, and uh, the model is also a good five to ten degrees colder than the GFS is. You know, this thing for Tuesday, Joe, uh, I'm not, and I'm not saying that. Not, yeah, this is the scary part about social media. You always seem to uh, sometimes you get misquoted, and I don't want somebody to say, "Well, Joe Rayo said I'm making the suggestion or the similarities to the blizzard of '88." The blizzard of 88, March of, 19, of 1888, started out, it was a Sunday, and it started out uh, with temperatures in the 40s, and it started to rain during the afternoon hours of that Sunday, and then all of a sudden, it started getting sharply colder Sunday night, the rain went over to snow, people woke up on Monday morning to much colder weather, windier weather, snowier weather. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen this coming Tuesday night or Wednesday, but there is that chronology that we might find ourselves with rain during Tuesday and then changing over, over perhaps, snow. mixing or changing over to snow yeah. Tuesday night and then a, a, a change to much colder weather and maybe windier weather and maybe Wednesday morning if everything were to pan out just right, snowy weather. But then again, it's all going to be develop, de dependent upon the development of a wave on the front, the, the exact track of the front relative to us, how quickly the storm energizes or how slowly it energizes. There are a lot of different possibilities here, but the time to watch, I think, will be from about midday Tuesday to midday on Wednesday. During that 24-hour time frame, we may see a lot happen in a short little time, but we're just too far away right now for us to give any real specifics other than just simply say, let's watch it, and hopefully it'll come more into focus in the coming days ahead. The uh, origins of this vortex I, 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 it actually comes from Siberia. I'll roll it back. It's off the screen, but... Uh, if you go near the top center, you can actually watch that vortex emer uh, drop southward. The first one is what's over us now. Uh, and you notice, by the way, the broadness yeah. of this trough as well. It's another 
uh, it's not quite the bowling ball, but it's a very, you know, almost looks like a salad bowl, really, right. in terms of, of, of the, uh, the upper flow. Very smooth, not a whole lot of definition to it. And it's reflected by the fact that when we looked at what was going on on, on the radars and, and, uh, and the uh, extent of the watches and warnings outside of Lake Effect, there really isn't very much. Now, that trough swings out. The vortex up to the north uh, comes down from northern Canada, drives southward, and strengthens like right. crazy. Right. And here Look it is that. on the GFS. The center going pivots around the Great Lakes. This is, by the way... Uh, also illustrating another problem with this winter, as far as we're con you know we're concerned here at the coast, is the fact that if you look at where this bottoms out, Joe, it bottoms out right near 90 west, which is right. pretty much where Chicago is, right. and the trough axis is a little too far west for for the east coast. Right. Now the uh, the GFS pulls it out when we as we move through Thursday and Friday, and it leaves a very very weak trough behind. But if we look at the Europeans' view because of what it's doing. And I think we also have to get out of this notion that just because it's the European, it, 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 it's an, it, we're automatically going to assume that it's the model that's going to wind up with the correct solution because that has not been, no, you know, it's not, it's been, not the been the case at all. At all. Uh, it's, been, it's been downright horrible. So that's why, uh, you know, I really would be careful about putting too much stock into, into, uh, into any of this uh, with regards to the outcome. But, you uh, the difference with the European is, uh, again, that that much sharper trough, right. and, and it swings it around. It's like a pendulum. It, uh, you know, just you're absolutely right. It goes negatively tilted, and the question is, how quickly does it go negatively? Uh, does it tilt negatively? In other words, how quickly yeah, does it go tilt Boom. to the right? Uh, and, and the other thing is, Joe, is that. Uh, you know, because of the fact that, as you just said, they bottom, they're bottoming out, these systems are bottoming out near 90 west, places in the southeastern states, like the Florida Peninsula, for example, you know, there are some winters where that cold air goes all the way down the eastern seaboard into the peninsula and drops temperatures even as far south as Miami yeah. into the 30s. But because they're bottoming, this, this pattern has been bottoming out to the west of us and then kind of lifting up to the north and east, um, Florida is missing out. Well, sure South, of, well, certainly South Florida, South Florida. probably not. Yeah, I, I think on this one, there's going to be a, a low-level cold air is going to bleed down, at least down into North Florida. Right. Uh, where you, you probably will see temperatures at 32 or less. I wouldn't be shocked. Uh, the European leaves a stronger trough hanging back in the east for Friday and Saturday. So that why, that's why it holds in the cold. And then after that, you, know, we, you, you mentioned this yesterday, when you have a mother load that comes down like this... Uh, the atmosphere basically, uh, I guess, I guess we could refer to as as running out of cold air, or at least it runs out of the extreme cold air. So uh, you kind of get a relaxation of the pattern going forward in the long range, uh, out to uh, day ten, which is at February fourth, and you have a much you have a gentler v uh, flow coming out of Canada, although there is. Uh, a, a, a flow there. What I find interesting is that we seem to be developing that split flow look again uh, from the Pacific, mm -hmm. with systems starting to maybe come back into California in the southern part of the jet. Right. So we might, we may be. I don't know if, if this is going to carry on going forward, but uh, with a split flow, uh, you are going to have uh, streams of sub, of uh, subtropical moisture getting involved. And weather systems in that southern part of the jet moving along, that's what we had back in December when they had the big snowstorm in the mid-Atlantic states, and the one earlier this month also in the um, in the mid-Atlantic states in the Washington D.C. Baltimore area right. that they got snow up to as far north as southern New Jersey, and that was about it. Your fire hose looks like it's trying to develop again south of Alaska toward, the, but it gets kind of it gets to about the British Columbia part of uh, North America, West North America, and then all of a sudden everything kind of gets diverted by that trough that's uh, moving into the Pacific. Another right. one of those. Let's pull up the Pacific endless... view. We'll go to the GFS and use that because the the, uh, uh, the GFS will take us out at least to day 16, but we could take a look at the Pacific and let's roll it back as the maps load. See, now at least to start off with, you've got that upper high off the west coast and a deep upper low off the Aleutians back, uh, this was on Wednesday, and they 
on the right on the on the far right you can see the big uh, the plunging pole the, the first vortex that we're dealing with now and then the, this the big one that comes down uh, you got the, the, I'm trying you know kind of sort of trying to digest the Pacific here you have some amplitude which you you know you, you would much rather have that if you're a snow lover than have that fire hose but here we are at day almost day nine and it's kind of fire hose ish from uh, from China, from south, south southeast China, uh, the flow runs west northwest and northwest toward the Gulf of Alaska, almost in a straight line. Right, and then then you start to get. See, here's where the flow sort of splits out there right. as, as we go through the latter part of the forecast period. So, uh, you know, the split flows can be can be productive as uh, from a snow standpoint in the east if you have um, if you have the the right setup. And on the North Atlantic side, at the same time, well, I mean, you do have some sense, some signs of a, another upper high forming up near England again, pushing out toward Greenland. So we could uh, probably seeing a an east best an east based NA negative NAO, which is not the best NAO to have. Um, Aren't you happy now, Joe? For at least the next three weeks, you can have your teleconnections maps back. Yes, they're coming back. We can see what they look like. So. <laughs> Look, after this month, I guess what we're going to have to uh, conclude uh, from the long range, Joe, from what I'm looking at uh, on this Friday night, uh, that you know we get we, we deal with this bitter cold air this week, and then the atmosphere is going to maybe go into a bit of a state of flux as it tries to figure out uh, what it wants to do. Call it a winter mission. Or oh, that's very good. Or, or, winter, <laughs> or winter lewd, so to speak. Oh, boy, that's two for two. Uh, they, they, Don't push your luck and try the third one. Well, I mean, the, the, uh, this is, at this time of January, I believe this is the time when the traditional January thaw kicks in. Uh, for whatever reason, the temperatures, the average temperatures or mean temperatures jump up a degree or two uh, in late January, and then they fall back after uh, the end of January into February for, for a short while. There's a little bit of a moderation traditionally at this time of the year. And uh, I guess you could call what's coming our way this weekend, if not anything, a, at least a quiet period, no real problems. And then we're going to go right into that, uh, that frigidity again for the middle and latter part of next week. Um, all the models, Steve LaPointe, do uh, show a change over to, uh, to uh, snow. Uh, that, that, uh, that is correct. Uh, the uh, the European has that more robust look because of the sharper trough. Uh, one of the things that I from yesterday, and I'll just bring this back up. Let me go back to the uh, the maps for a second. Uh, one of the things that might be supportive for the idea of some snow on the backside of that front is the fact that the front comes through, and yet uh, the winds aloft because the upper low is so far to the west, Joe. The, still are, are still from the southwest. I think we could show that to everybody. So let's uh, let me bring that that upper air map. Actually, we'll try to look at. Let's see if we get the. Uh, we'll look at the 700 millibar. So we'll go a little bit lower. Remember the days, Joe, when we had we used to look at the now long defunct LFM, and in a situation like this, we'd be looking anxiously at the surface panel, and then either you or I would say, "Look, they put an L. They put an L over yeah. North Carolina." <laughs> the. Uh, the, the the GFS and this is now Tuesday night uh, at 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 this level of the atmosphere still has southwest winds even though when you go to the surface at this point uh, the winds are clearly uh, more are, are are north or north northwest right but uh, so so there's 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 almost and, and, and there's almost a little bit of I guess what you might call it weak overrunning right. that is going on right. and once the winds aloft turn westerly which we, they will do shortly after 2 or 3 a.m. Uh, the precip just completely shuts off uh, th that's that's a huge difference uh, from what the European has which I can't we can't see the uh, the, the, the uh, surface is not available uh, but what we can do as I could put the fake sur the well, I'll call it the fake surface, but this is just just the isobars. So here's your this is this is um, you can't even really see it because it's Tuesday to Wednesday. It just kind of jumps, right. but you can see on Tuesday it has one low there in, in over Lake Ontario and this long cold front and a series of of what looks like waves uh, all the way down to a wave that's that's in southern Mississippi, which by Tuesday night. Uh, finds it. Uh, I'm sorry. By Wednesday morning, is sitting in eastern Connecticut. Now I looked at the in-between map, 
and in the in-between map the low was just touching the Delaware coast. Right, there's kind of a bagginess in the isobars which show that uh, maybe some cyclogenesis is taking place uh, Tuesday night on that front. Well, there and there's your high. You got this right. fin this ridge that's down from Maine, ridging down to New York City uh, into uh, into Maryland and Northern Virginia. So, uh, it, and then you, then you have that ocean low, which is out to the east. See, this is what I'm kind of wondering: <clears throat> the presence of this low and what kind of impact it's it's going to have on this approaching front. Right. Well, because it, it looks like if this weren't here, would, I would I, I would think this would just move along. The front would just more freely move. You just you're right. absolutely right. It would just like it come through and it would just be your standard throw power, your standard cold front. But with that out there over the ocean, that front is going to uh, have a little bit of a time, you know, more of a head headway to get on through. And in the process of slowing down. Something may begin to, uh, there may be a kink in that front, which may allow for some cyclogenesis, and that may be the thing that the European is latching on to and rolling up. But again, the question is, how close is it going to be? If it's got to be, it's got to be a bit offshore for us to uh, get into that colder air and to get some snow, if you're a snow lover, because if it's still over us or close to us, it'll just ripple right across our area with a bit of precipitation, finishing out with a bit of snow, a cheap thrill maybe for snow lovers, and then the thing really begins to wind up to our, our north and uh, northeast. We maybe wake up on Wednesday morning with the winds starting to, you know, roar, so to speak, and saying, darn it, it's I also, happening. You know, it's, I also wonder, <clears throat> well, yeah, it would happen, all of this would happen during the overnight. We'd have to force ourselves to stay awake to watch, to watch, for, oh, watch it. I'll I don't be know. up all night. Yes. Yeah. Um, I also wonder if we do wind up, if we were to wind up with a few inches of snow, um, how that might impact the temperatures going forward with that, that cold air oh, coming in. Oh, well, that, 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 that could, that could knock it down a bit more. That certainly will help. And, and then again, think about this. Uh, just this came to mind. If we do have cyclogenesis, along the mid-Atlantic coast, rolling northward and northeastward past us Tuesday night, the benchmark of an intensifying storm would be thunderstorm, so, or thunder snow, maybe? Well, it could be an exciting or an interesting night coming up well, on Tuesday night. Well, all right, so we yeah. certainly have, you know, we certainly have uh, time for models. To, I think I think with the weekend, the models are going to be, you know, we're going to spend their time uh, moving them, moving pieces around, and, and, and we're probably going to see a little more uh, volatility in that, but we do at least know what we're dealing with, uh, with with regards to what's coming in for next week. And regardless of whether it winds up producing uh, uh, anything uh, meaningful as far as snow is concerned, uh, the cold air is real, and and it's going to get bitter cold here as we head into uh, Wednesday, you know, Wednesday night, Thursday, and into Friday. Steve Lapont says Joe Rayo snow weenies would be happy with just a couple of inches. I get messaged every every uh, day asking for when it's going to snow. But, you know, again, it's, it's, the way this winter has gone on so far, at least for us, we're in the snow hole. 99 Wolves, you're talking about Chicago uh, because that's where you are. And, yeah, I, I mean, it looks like you're going you're gonna to wind up with a decent snowfall out of this, I would think. Uh, the only thing that could mess you up is if the low winds up going somewhere between you and Milwaukee. Uh, and then uh, you might... Uh, you, you might see the snow area shift to the north. It's going to be close. Uh, it, it, m most of the models at least want to take the surface low down into north central Illinois. And if that if that is the case, you should be able to squeeze out some snow out of this, uh, a, a fairly decent uh, amount, I suppose. If uh, the model, uh, I think the uh, weather service there has a an eight or nine printed up for Chicago as far as snowfall is concerned. I didn't even take a look and see what they were actually going for in uh, Lake City de Windy. Um, light snow in O'Hare and four above zero. Wow. Lovely. That is lovely. All right, so let's see what they're... I got there. Come on. See, what I love about... Uh, you know, I guess maybe because we don't use this site uh, very often, but at least on the New York site, Joe, I they got the box on the front page, the, uh, the icon on the front page that says... Um, Snow and it takes you right to the snow maps, right? Uh, and winter weather, right? Yeah, so I'm just trying to now. I'm um, significant snow. So we have what do we have? A, per, a map that shows percentages. I don't want a map that shows percentages, I want a map with numbers, and they're not giving it to me. IOT is that the uh, hang on. I can I can cheat. 
Hang on one second. Let me see if I can... Ah, uh, you know what? I, I'll have to dig... I, I won't be able to do it. Okay. Uh, next time I'll have it ready to go. I, I know a way how to get the snow map. I just, I just, just, just playing something. Numbers. You remember when you, we couldn't get into weather, weathertrends360.com? Right. Well, how about if we go back to Google and go weathertrends360.com comma dashboard? Okay, let's try that. Weather... Weather trends... Trend. 360... 360.com... Comma dashboard. Dot com slash dashboard. No, com no comma. Okay. Dashboard. O a r d. Let's see if that automatically gets us to. Uh... There you go. There it there is. There you go, Joe. Okay, so hold on. Let's bring it. Well, are they gonna? I hope they don't get mad if we bring it up there. No, will I? I've been. I have. I bring them up a lot on my uh, Facebook page, and if any of you ever wanted to get some really interesting weather information, uh, especially for the northeast part of the country, I think they they emanate out of uh, out of Pennsylvania is where the company is. Uh, go to them. They are they are a very very good site. All right, so we gave them a good plug. Okay, so, so what are we looking on here for? Uh, okay. Um, Let's see. Just uh, scroll down. Can you scroll down a bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right here. Oh. Right here. And there's not, not... Not the video. Not the video, but if you can... Uh, does this move this? Well, no, that's an actual video. All right. Um, how about over here? Oh, wait, wait. Here it is. Is this it? Oh, that's the January 20th. Current snow cover. Season Since snow. The there we go. There you go. There's your snow hole. There. See? You see everybody where the snow hole is? We're sitting in it. It's amazing. Look at the uh, the the snow. That's exactly uh, up, up in in upstate New York. Uh, back out to the to to uh, our our to the west. Uh, sad, just... sad snow lovers. <laughs> yep, there's the snow hole, folks. The rest of the nation is just going crazy with snow, and we've got this insane snow hole. That's really wild, isn't it? And now you can see why our, our good friend Andy is buried where he is. Uh... Is upstate New York is uh, pretty well buried. Yep. Uh, All right. So, what are you doing this weekend? Anything exciting? No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Well, that, that, that was. Oh, wait a minute. That wait, was quick enough. Wait a minute. I, I am going to. Uh, I'm going to be at my wife's uh, German club uh, annual meeting. Not annual. Weekly. Weekly. Monthly. Monthly meeting. It was supposed to be last weekend, but it was canceled because of the snow. It's coming up this upcoming. Uh, Sunday, my wife and I are going to be the host and hostess for the rat race. They, they where they roll rats. They they roll no dice, big dice, and um, you bet on. They 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 have like various size statues of rats and mice. Okay. And whoever wins wins a prize or wins money or whatever. And we we've, we've been so good at it. She's I'm <laughs> I'm Pat I'm Pat Sajak and oh, she's, she's my Vanna. Vanna. I told her I said you ought to wear a beautiful gown. You know, this this Sunday we could really play this up big, but but <laughs> well, anyway, that's got what, the hair for it too. Yeah, sure, certainly. Oh. And you're going to be uh, you're going to be celebrating on Sunday. You've got a specific major. Yes. So I got my 60th life, birthday Sunday. So life yes, event so coming up. I'm having um, I'm going to have dinner with my uh, my daughters and my my mother, and uh, she will cook a nice meal, and everybody will be happy. And I will have a day off, which will be nice. Yes. So happy birthday to me, everybody. Um, all right, so <clears throat> we're going to wrap it up here, folks, at this at this point. Thanks for being here tonight on this Saturday night. Uh, we're going to keep... Uh, Saturday night? This, I'm sorry, this Friday night. I'm rushing. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I will be... Uh, I'll be live streaming at some point over the weekend. I'm not sure about Sunday, uh, but uh, Saturday... I'm gonna to have to squeeze one in Sunday somehow if there's if if, if there's a, a more serious snow threat going on, but we'll we'll figure it out when we get there. But figure that I'll live stream at some point over the weekend. Patreon members, you'll get uh, your uh, live stream over the weekend because I'll do those in the morning. Oh, I, I should mention something. Yes. Be in in the you know essence of goodwill, mm -hmm. and since he is after all a mutual friend of of ours or whatever, Craig Allen. This is his birthday today. His birthday is, is it, no, is, uh, it, I th uh, it's the 28th. I got, I got a message on is YouTube. Is it today? I got a message on YouTube saying, you know, congratulate Craig Allen. Oh. So this well, he's far older than me. <laughs> far older. <laughs> 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 All 
Did you want to? Did you well, watch him? No, well, did you listen to him when you were growing up in the Bronx? No, no. He's he's actually only I think he's either a year older than me or two years older than me. Uh, well, I used to always wind up working my birthday because he would take off for his birthday when he was working the weekends, and I filled in for him at picks. And when I worked at picks on a regular basis, I used to work on my birthday no matter what. Right. So um, I always knew I was going to work around the twenty. I, I thought it was the, for some reason I thought it was the twenty eighth. But well, I always know that the two of you are very close together. So yes. Today, so we wish a happy birthday happy birthday to Craig. To Craig. And your birthday is on Sunday. Yes. And mine is in August, so we don't have to worry about right. me for a long time. And we got a ways to go. All right, folks. So uh, watch for live streams this weekend. Patreon members, you get your your members only live stream tomorrow and Sunday morning. And of course, you just go to the website. You can go on the uh, the Google uh, the Google app if you got an Android device. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, download it because it's got the new update in there, the Zoom radar. You can get your local forecast for wherever you wherever you want your local weather conditions. And uh, I'm very happy with it, and it works quite well. Plus, uh, if it ever snows in the, our neck of the woods again, I've got every snow map in there that updates automatically from northern Georgia all the way up to Maine. So if it doesn't snow where you are, you got to be able to find somewhere up and down the East Coast where it might be snowing. You know, I had to bring my children's, uh, my children's snow book. You know, you've, you're always plugging everything here. I, I should, I should bring on my snow book and tell people to go and look for that, too. Maybe yes. I'll do that Please, next week. Oh, no, by all means. Um, have a great uh, night and a great weekend, everybody. We'll see, you, uh, we'll see you at some point over the weekend. Okay. And for Facebook. And on Facebook. Oh, yeah, 9, 925 tonight on Facebook. Right. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Good night, everybody.